Hi guys, John the Firearms Instructor and welcome back to our channel. This week, it's all about the second week of our 30 day challenge. We're gonna cover trigger, trigger uh, engagement and we're gonna cover sight picture and sight alignment. Last week, we covered uh, grip and stance. Now we're talking about trigger and how to aim the pistol. And it's gonna be a very good video. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. It's John, the firearms instructor. So we're gonna start with a dummy gun again. This is our dummy yellow gun, because I have to point it at the camera. And we are in a closed set, but we have to say this just for the powers to be. Uh, we're gonna keep our finger off the trigger. We talked about grip and stance last week. But now we're gonna talk about trigger engagement. And it's a very simple thing to tell you. It's about a trigger press versus a trigger pull. And if you press the trigger, you're gonna keep the gun level. I've showed you this before, but the more you put your finger, the deeper you put your finger into the pistol, the more chance you're gonna manipulate the pistol. So let me just identify what you wanna do to make sure we get our good grip, high on the stance and tip of our finger up here and then we're going to bring it and use the tip of the finger not the full crease we don't want the crease in the weapon we want the tip of the finger matter of fact if you look at that gap right there that gap is so important for us to make sure that we're not letting the gun move when we're engaging trigger. I'm pressing the trigger. Look how it rolls to the left automatically when you're applying pressure to it. So the more we're able to use the tip of our finger, now each person's a little different. Some people can put the whole finger in the gun and not manipulate it. Some people have to put the very tip tip in their finger. Some have to put the middle of the pad in their finger, a uh, middle of the pad of the trigger to do what you need to do. But you wanna make sure you don't have your full finger in the gun, this is gonna cause us a lot of manipulation. Most right-handed students, which I am, is when we put the weapon out in front of us and we slowly press the trigger back and I'm applying pressure to this trigger, it should not move. But if you don't have good grip with this hand, when you apply pressure to the trigger, it's gonna cause the weapon to roll off to the left, which is gonna be somewhat why most right-handed students shoot low and left is two things. One, they're pulling the trigger, which is another thing people do. We can't pull a trigger. The moment we pull the trigger, uh, this gun has no activation trigger on it, but just showing you when you try to apply pressure to the trigger, it's gonna cause it to dip an awful lot. So we wanna make sure that we get a good grip, push it out in front of us, and slowly begin to take the slack out of the trigger. The terminology really is a trigger travel. How much of that trigger needs to go back before it engages? One of the things I tell most of my students is, we need to make sure that we're pressing the trigger and the shot's a surprise to us. If the shot's not a surprise to us, then we are actually pulling the trigger. I always ask students, hey, how many of those shots you knew were gonna fire? If they say five, then we know we were pulling the trigger versus pressing the trigger. We need to slowly engage the trigger without moving it off the horizontal and vertical plane. If you don't know what the horizontal and vertical plane is, the horizontal line is your line of eye, across your line of eye, and your vertical is over your dominant eye. Look like I'm a Catholic Pope here doing some thing here. <laughs> but you want to be vertical and horizontal. And your best way to do this is to make sure the weapon's over the dominant eye by turning the chin just a little bit and then slowly pressing the trigger and not manipulating the pistol. This is where dry firing comes in an awful lot, guys, because you need to spend enough time with the gun to understand how much that trigger moves back to the point where the weapon's gonna cut. And if we could slowly get that back about half trigger, finalize your sight system and finish it, you're engaging a trigger a lot smoother. There's a lot of drills. Uh, next week, we're gonna do drills for you guys that you can concentrate on 
trigger control, like the line drill, the putting a black magic line up on a white piece of paper and shooting at that line, making sure you're impacting the line or above it. If you're actually shooting below the line, you've got some weird thing going. Maybe you're dipping your shoulders or you're pulling the trigger or doing something like that. That's a real good drill. And I'll put that video right here that you can kind of look at the line drill. It's a great opportunity for you to see exactly what you're doing with the pistol. The more we understand the science of the trigger engagement, the better we're going to be. So this being said, let's go ahead and go to site picture and site alignment. Well, you're still going to use the rubber gun, but a lot of people get confused on what a trigger actually does. Let me grab this tactical marker real quick. Most people think that if I have the bullet, if I have the gun, my little gun here, and I pull the trigger, that bullet is just flying in a straight line, which it does not do. It's not possible for it to do that because the manufacturers knew the moment that bullet comes out of the barrel, gravity is pulling on it. So we have to do some adjustment to get that bullet to travel. So if you think about it, this is your bore axis. This is this part right here. This is the center of the barrel. Now if I take the center of the barrel and I want to shoot the bullseye, which is right there, if I cover the barrel over the bullseye, look where my sights are. They're going to impact high. The bullet is going to go above the line of sights, but if you take the barrel and stick it directly on there, you would never impact the bullseye. You shoot higher than the bullseye if you did not manipulate the pistol in one way or the other. Most of the time, someone shoots to the center of the paper plate and either pulls down or shoots high. If you had the bullet, if you had the gun here in this point right here, you would, you would, if you engage the trigger, you would impact high up here. This is where you would impact. Most people aim here, but pull the trigger, which causes the impact here and here, right? If we're over torquing with our dominant hand, which our non-dominant hand should control the weapon, that's what we'd be over here, right? Because we're over torque. And if we're shooting high, in left, we're concentrating on our front post and not putting it through the back post. This, this is in the sight without this, and this is in the sight without this. The two together make a sight. What if I told you that the bullet doesn't come out like a straight line, but it comes like an arc, and it rises at a certain point and falls at a certain point. Now rifles have a bigger arc, a pistol has a shorter arc. A rifle arc is going to look similar to that, where a pistol arc is going to go, it's going to drop off dramatically and farther it goes. And that's kind of what we need to think about. So where is this arc at? I would highly recommend you start at your 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 feet, right? Which is, which is five yards, uh, three yards, three yards, five yards, seven yards. Well, be somewhere between three and five yards. And what I'm going to ask you to do, instead of aiming in the center of the paper plate, I want you to be here at the bottom of the paper plate. At six o'clock hold, if we kind of think about that. I need to see what I'm aiming at. Because don't forget, you have your line of sight. You have your line of sight. And you have your bore axis. And if those two didn't touch each other, well, obviously, you would never see the impact. And you'd always be shooting lower and higher. But what if I told you the bullet comes out like this? And that right there is your cross of axis. And that makes it your zero. And that's what we're looking for. Two things when you aim below the bullseye, just like this is you're going to get consistent point of aim. And the consistent point of aim is going to make you more accurate to begin with. And then if we try to keep the 
gun in the box and not manipulate the pistol to a point where you're pulling it, that right there will make you more accurate to begin with. This is the simplest way I can explain how to aim a pistol. You must put your front post in the middle of your back post. You must put it in the box. You need to find below your six club. We talk about sometimes the golf ball and golf tee method. Some people call it the lollipop method. Doesn't matter what we call it, it's still the same thing. You've got to see what you're aiming at. If you don't see what you're aiming at, it, accuracy's not gonna be there. Now, if we're just trying to shoot the paper plate, all this will, every bullet will be in the paper plate at these short distances. It's when we get thrown out is when you manipulate. That's why we did the very beginning. We did our test. The test is gonna, this will tighten your accuracy up an awful lot because now you have consistent point of aim. This is week number two. So what I need you to do is I need to get the range and try this out. I need you to do those dry firing drills for me. Uh, we talked about last week and the week before. If you haven't started this yet, you can catch up with us. It's pretty easy and simple. And all you need to do is hashtag it, 30 day challenge, 30 day accuracy challenge. And I'll be able to look at them if you share them on social media or something like that. Don't forget to hit the bell icon, the like, and the subscribe button. And every week, we're going to give you one more week of this. Next week, I'm going to be on a little holiday. I'm going to go on a marathon. But I'm going to try to put together some drills for you guys to practice for the third week. week three we're going to do a live on week three as well as we're going to do a video like this if you like what we're doing here guys don't forget to hit the bell icon the like and the subscribe button and every time we upload a video just like this one you'll be the first to know join us for our live every tuesday night at six o'clock and please 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 tell a friend or a family member and you dig it we appreciate it until next time, guys, God bless, be safe, and remember, you are your first line of defense. I love you very much. Have a great week.